time for more client logos from Logo Ground. My name is Andre Beru. Let's learn from logo mistakes. First up today is a samurai logo. Really nice. This is good design work, but there is one fairly serious problem. Hopefully you can see it. The typography. It's not a bad font, but it's not a good match for this logo. It is very rigid or stiff. I would perhaps look for a font that echoes some of the loose zigzag style of the logo. And white, not the dark red. And then the alignment, if we take this as one unit, then the text is neatly centered below that unit. But this unit has a bit that sticks out. The visual weight of the design is here. And that is what we care about. Our brains want this center to align to that one. And we want this bit to match that bit. If it doesn't, it feels wrong. Like that. Much better. Depending on the design, you could also go halfway. This is one center. Uh, this is also a center. So take the center of the two centers. Or slightly tweaked this way or that way until it looks correctly aligned. I also want to talk about the shading here. This isn't a big issue. If you ignore this bit, uh, the logo can still be approved. But why not have a bit of white here and a bit of gray here? Also, I'd make this gray a little darker. People watching this video on a phone probably can't even see this light gray. They just see white here. You want your logos to work on phones too. Next logo. And I'm not showing you the title, because we are playing Guess the Animal. Well, it has wings. I thought it could be an eagle. Maybe this part is the beak, but then I don't know what this is. I also don't know what this is, but that might be just decorative, so I'll ignore that. Unless it is the beak, and those are the eyes, but that doesn't seem likely. I'm guessing that these are ears. Okay, so not an eagle. If it has ears and wings, then we are looking at either a bat or an owl. I think it's an owl. Has to be, right? Those are not exactly owl eyes, but these are really not bat wings. So owl. I'm saying it's an owl. Maybe you did better than me. It's not an owl. It's a fox. So this is the nose. This then, I think, is... Not the mouth, but I guess the jawline. Look, it's not badly designed. It's just close to impossible to see what it is. You can add wings to a fox, sure. But then it has to be a very obvious fox. Otherwise, it quickly becomes unrecognizable. Next up, a magical spider elixir logo. Lovely design with two small issues. These tiny gaps are too tiny, no reason to have them that small. Easy to fix, and it will make your design more usable at small sizes. Also, you have shards. Imagine if the owner of this logo wants to make stickers to use for vehicle decals. That super sharp point will fold or wrinkle and just be a complete pain to work with. You should just blunt the tip. And this isn't good. This one is so sharp, it doubles back on itself. Next up, a panda and a turtle combination. That's clever. The panda's ears double as the front paws of the turtle. Paws or claws. I'm not sure what you call turtle legs. Let's just call them legs. The problem with this design is symmetry. It looks like you were aiming to make this symmetrical, but it isn't quite. It's close. If we do the dancing logo trick, go panda. If you flip your design horizontally and it does a little dance for you like that, then you know it's not symmetrical. Alignment isn't quite right. And this is not optimal. If you want to make something bigger, you can use the stroke for that. But don't stop there. You want your final vector file nice and clean and tidy. So it makes sense to combine these objects, make them one object. Next up, a Fire Fist Mountain logo. I like this design. I'll show you two versions of this logo that the designer uploaded. This is the first one. Several issues here, like the weird gaps, the thin thumb, 
the sharp corners here, shoddy alignment and so on. So we declined it and I'm very impressed by the designer's response. Most of the issues were fixed in the second version, including an upgrade for the flames, which look much better now. One change that made it worse is the addition of gradients. Gradients are not always bad, obviously. You can use them, but they can be tricky. I think the red gradient is okay, you can keep that. The grey, not so much. Um, it just makes the white look a little dirty down here. And the gradient inside these small white caps is a bad idea. It changes too quickly from white to grey compared to the gradual change here. So maybe combine all the white into one object first, then apply the gradient so that this part matches that part. But I would remove the gradients altogether. And I would move these caps down a bit. They seem uncomfortably close to the edge. Like that. Next logo, a travel mind logo. The idea is interesting, but man, there is something really wrong with this guy's face. I think it's mainly the nose, also this shape here, and the lips, and the tiny little chin. Just take your phone, take a few selfies from the side, and trace one of them. Problem solved. Alternatively, get a whole bunch of face silhouettes and study the proportions. Look at this angle relative to that one and that one, and all of them relative to a vertical line, and this distance compared to that one, and compared to that one, and so on. You get the picture. If you study that, you can draw face silhouettes forever without even needing a reference. Next logo. Wow, we're already seven minutes into this video and this is logo seven of ten. Let's do the rest rapid fire. Okay, this one, generic microphone with a generic leaf inside. The combination may be unique, but often generic plus generic equals generic. And this looks like sound waves coming from the microphone. If your microphone starts doing that, it's time for a new microphone. Next. Well, I love this, and I'm not sure why. It's simple and interesting, and it looks happy somehow, like it belongs in a playground. What bugs me is the shading. Shouldn't it look like this instead? Or this? I'm not saying it should, but in yours there seems to be a disconnect between the shape and the shading. The shading you have suggests more this kind of shape, like a skateboard ramp and you have to look into kerning. Next, guess the animal again. Well, I immediately got this one. It's an octopus tentacle, right? Like that, with a location marker here in the negative space. Nope. Last time I said it was an owl, and I was wrong. This time I said tentacle, and now it's an owl. Go figure. So, I think this white is the face, with the eye, and you're seeing this owl kind of from behind. So this would be like the shoulder or the top of the wing with the beak over here, just out of view on the far side, and then the moon in the background. Well, it's definitely promising, just confusing. And the last one, a sleeping dog. Two small issues. Well, three, four. Okay, five, five quick ones. Starting from the bottom up, the text. On logo ground, you have to use generic text like company name or brand name, etc. No dummy names. Then the ellipse is weird because we are seeing the puppy directly from the side. So we should not see the bed or mat slightly from above. Then the line here is not quite straight. I see why. And anatomically, that's correct, but it's such a slight bend in the line that you might as well just have a simple straight line. Simpler is better. Then the shading. There is one piece of shading in the entire design. Either shade consistently all over or remove that lonely shadow. And lastly, tidy it up. It looks like you were in a hurry to get this done. Take your time. 
And we will stop there for today. You know where the subscribe button is. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.